The king's chamberlain insists that everyone should come, even poor Efotajo, who is brought in from the forest by two hunters. She is so changed that people don't even recognize her. The old priestess explains the king's plan. The plan is for all the women to prepare with their own hands a stew. They will offer it to Oriade Kigbe. It is hoped that through this, he will come to know his proper mother. Eventually, it seems Oriadeki Igbe has been shown everyone. The priestess asks him to take just one final look. So there it is. The righteous have come out on top. The wicked are to be punished. While the two elder wives are led away, Efutajo, now based and freshly dressed, returns to sing of how, with patience and honesty, we can overcome our misfortunes. A sentiment close to Ogunde's heart. In any venture, there must be problems. There must, be, there must be difficulties, and then one has to persevere in spite of uh, all odds. I think uh, this has been the reason why I have been able to be successful up to this point. Because in my life, I never, problems don't set me back. When I meet any problems, what I do is to just ignore it and push forward. Apart from Ibisami, the other person most important to Ogunde's work was Adeshiwa, or Madame Eko, as she will always be remembered by Nigerian audiences. The beautiful girl who left her studies to follow Ogunde and the life of the traveling theater. Uh, I think it's the saddest thing that has ever happened to me in my whole career as a dramatist, because uh, she was a frontline woman. She was always with me. And um, she was really very good. But unfortunately, we were to go to uh, Elisha to perform, and they were going ahead of me. And the lorry in which they were traveling had an accident, and she died. People even thought I wouldn't be able to survive it. They thought I wouldn't be able to continue. But um, after a few days, I thought she was gone, she was gone. And so, and I have a goal. I have a mission to fulfill. If the death of this madame could stop the whole mission, it means it was no mission at all. 
if it was a mission and a career, nothing should stop me. So I continued. Today, in spite of his success and national popularity, Ogunde's theatre still operates as it's always done. It's never had a subsidy or government grant. It survived, as indeed to all the other travelling companies, on its simple ability to pull a crowd. <laughs> Hotel Fontia, la gomme de la Hotel Fontia. Ogunde deliberately keeps his operation simple. In a country where things have a habit of breaking down, he believes in being self-sufficient, even to carry in his own generator for lighting, and sometimes even his own stage. As those who have seen him in rehearsal will know, he doesn't allow anything to upset him. I've never seen him lose his temper. I suppose he must do, but I've never seen it. He's always extremely patient, very friendly. This is how I think he disarms Nigerians. We are quite an aggressive race as a whole. And he has his own personal style of not being aggressive. And even during the pressure of rehearsals, he's still extremely calm and relaxed. But when it comes to business, it's as hard as steel. I think, in my own opinion, a good artist is not a good businessman. I think both don't go together. If you're an artist, you can't be a good businessman. A businessman has to go this way. An artist goes straight. And so I cannot call myself a good businessman. He's a very, very good businessman, a shrewd one. Uh, he's a good Ijebu man. All Ijebu men are known to be good businessmen. <laughs> and um, he shows this in his dealing with um, customers, like the National Theatre. The National Theatre was the venue for Ogunde's first feature film, the recently made Aye. After it had been running a fortnight, Ogunde had a disagreement with the management on his percentage of the take. So he went into the projection box and removed his film. As a result, there was a riot in the theater. He always insists on controlling his box office. He will not allow any outsiders to do so. And he then will hand the management cut to them, not the other way around. But Dagri, the old coastal trading port and one-time slave market, where tonight, Ogunde is showing Aye in the local open-air cinema. Ogunde doesn't sit down at home and say, the theater halls are managing my films very well. Thank you. He's too aware of uh, Nigerian management to leave his management of his art to anybody but himself. He takes complete control. My film is in 35 millimeter, and so I bought a portable projector. So when I was traveling abroad, I took two of my wives with me, and they learned how to operate uh, the projector. So when I came back, I usually, I mean, going to show a film somewhere, maybe at the cinema house or in a school hall or even in a town hall, then my wife will be there, my daughter will be there. They set up the projector and the senior wives uh, stand at the gate, collect uh, gate fees, and people go in and we exhibit. By that, I've been able to avoid the cheating by the cinema houses. And this isn't small money we are talking about. Oil-rich Nigeria has its own inflation, and a cinema seat costs about two pounds. But the Ogunde organization expects a return from other sources too. The family is there in force. Apart from managing the sale of soft drinks and refreshments, there are also Ogunde's latest recordings. Aye is a film that has already recovered 50% of its production cost in the capital city of Lagos alone. Now the rest of Nigeria is anxious to see it.
In a country of 90 million people, Ogunde has every reason to feel confident of its success. Aye is another traditional tale about witches and possession, divination and exorcism. I think my stories are for my people and uh, my films too are for my people mainly. Then if anybody wants to see it abroad, then I can export to them. For Chief Ogunde, Aye is a test of whether at the age of 62 he can start a new career as a filmmaker. The traditional African belief is that when you are to do something, you are to, when you have a mission to fulfill in this world, and you are the real man sent to fulfill this mission, your assistance will be provided to by providence. We, we Africans say, when you meet a wife and um, you, you marry her and you live long and there was no problem or there were problems, you are able to solve them, we think everything has been prearranged by God. So I now know that because of what I'm to do in this life, my wives and my children have been specially provided to be my assistants. He's also very conscious, he's also very caring about his society and about his country. And he feels that even if Nigeria is fast changing in its uh, mood and in its taste, that he can still be the spokesman for his people. Show up. 